of life, and it's all been in the year of 2024. I came here in February to play in Madison, and I came here in April to play in, no, I came in February to play Milwaukee, in April I played in Madison, and in August I played in Appleton. And a smart man would have played those three cities on one go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm from about as far from this place as you probably could get in the United States. I don't but I'm all the way at the very bottom of Alabama, so uh, it's pretty good piece. Well, shit. Uh, here's, a, here's a tune I wrote, and uh, I'll leave you this one. This is uh, some people like it, and some people don't. This is what you call, I tend to have a polarizing effect in my audience. <laughs> This is even more polarized than all the rest of it. So if you stay along this far, you'll probably done ball in. Uh, so. <laughs> I wrote this and uh, I wrote this. If you're a taxpayer, God bless you. You funded this. And, uh, uh, I was in a uniform when I wrote it. And, uh, of all the things that taxpayers have funded, as far as I know, this song hasn't killed anybody yet. So at least it's not the worst thing that we've ever funded. I promise you that. It's called Eight Partridges, 403rd Freakout. I hope you like it. Well, sometimes I think we're already dead, or this trap that I call time is just some inception like dream state I'm in. Mean. As I lay down, I think maybe we never existed at all, or just some five sets in hallucination, or just the mirror image of a higher reality beyond our comprehension. And I lie awake at night, I can't keep my mind from wondering about what it all means. That I have the ability to wonder what it all means. You know that nobody in this whole wide world can give you the definition of consciousness that doesn't venture off into religion or some kind of absurdist pseudoscience. And since I started listening to both sides without caring on the which side I fell, I found out that there were more than two sides if you really want to know a subject well, which only led me to more heartbreak as I thought about all the fights that have been started by two sides. And neither one of them were truly wrong or right. And then I started considering the brutality that I witness every day. And how numb to the side of human suffering that I'd become in my middle age. Cause all them fascists and them commies been spewing out their dogmas, taking over the conversations. Any voice that's devoid of an agenda has been removed from consideration. And I started thinking about the weapons of mass destruction, biological, chemical, and nukes. And we could have had them all fired from the push of a button of this orange presidential buffoon. And so I started reading up on how I was going to survive a new clear apocalypse and after my research I concluded I didn't even want to survive to live in the world like that. <laughs> so even if I try to be positive and convince myself someday we might actually see peace well it's then that I realize in like a billion years or so this planet's gonna cease to be because the sun has gravity too you know and we're being pulled in as we orbit and if we don't find a way to destroy ourselves then the sun's gonna do it for us Just as Einstein said it was so. And now I'm 
considering this, science kind of seems like a waste. I'm going to devote myself to art. At least an artist creates something of value, a unique representation of his heart. Then I look around at this plastic world and their frowning faces and their disdain for beauty. I see all the poor starving artists dwelling at the fringes of a cold society. But you know that we would not have fur Elise if it were not for this individual named Beethoven. And we'd certainly not have the White Album if Paul McCartney never met John Lennon. And I said, well, maybe that's my problem. I miss my Lennon. Somehow that chance to pass me by. And that's the reason I'm sitting here singing this stupid song and losing my freaking mind. <laughs> And then even this stranger thought my tortured mind began to ponder. Lord, I wonder what if Einstein would have met McCartney first while John Lennon was studying the great wonders. I mean, I ain't saying it would have been the Beatles, man, but it would have been interesting to see what they put out. Because I know that Einstein had some pretty cool hair, but I wonder if he could twist and shake. <laughs> Maybe if Einstein had been saying it, oh, blah, day, oh, blah, da. Instead of trapped in the letter to Roosevelt that paved the way for a nuclear bomb, then a little boy from Nagasaki could have married a pretty young girl from Hiroshima, and they could have sang oh bloody blood all together and taught their children songs by the Beatles. And I can imagine that the guy that wrote Imagine would have been in the use in a science lab, unless that lab had the sole purpose of giving world peace a chance. And so we gotta give Lennon to science. And Einstein and McCartney, we gotta find a way to get back in time. But then I realized if we ever build a time machine, it'll be based on the scientific work of Albert Einstein. <laughs> so la 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 turn off your mind. La 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 turn off your mind. La 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 turn off your mind. Cause an active mind. Well, thank y'all so much for having me here at the Mile Music in Appleton, and thank y'all for coming and uh, putting up with this shit at this beautiful uh, recital hall here, and uh, it's real a joy to play for y'all, and uh, me and my boy back there, he's going to be back here at the merch table, he'd love to see my shit if you're into it, and um, we were going to be down in Milwaukee now on Tuesday night. If you got friends down there, tell them to come see us at Shane Hall. It's my first solo show in Milwaukee. And so uh, it's always scary. You never know how it's going to go. So y'all come and tell your friends to come. All right? Thank y'all for putting up with this shit. <laughs>